When you are expanding your factory in Satisfactory, there are several main factors to consider. You need to account for extra power draw, use of resources on site, and the time spent constructing this new addition. Right now, you are looking at four blueprints, and they not only reducing the power draw, but they are also reducing resource consumption and save enormous amount of time. They are quite modular and cover vast majority of related production chains in Satisfactory. First blueprint is designed for production of 45 rotors per minute. Second blueprint is designed for production of 45 stators or 22.5 motors per minute, which is achieved by simply flipping a single power switch. Then there is a low touch solution for 45 rotors per minute without any copper being used by the factory. And the last one is another low touch solution for making 45 stators per minute by using only coal and iron. As you can notice, these factory buildings are bigger than a single 4x4 blueprint. In standard configuration, these are a single blueprints being mirrored, and in a single case, it's just being vertically stacked. But you can always go one step further and combine this into a bigger factory. There is a lot of flexibility with these blueprints. You can scale up production up to at least 90 rotors, 90 stairs or 45 motors per minute in one single building. Or you can combine rotor blueprint with the motor one and have complete motor production in one single building. And most important, there is no internal connections between blueprints, so setup is easy, straightforward and fast. As usual for my blueprints, they do come with full exterior, everything is labeled, intake rooms are separated from factories, blueprint description have total resource input breakdown with alternative recipes, and exterior have labels for global factory management. Aside providing blueprints itself, I will showcase factory setups, I would provide production schematics and discuss alternative recipes. So even if this factory is not your jam, you still can apply knowledge of this video to your own personal factories in Satisfactory. Rotor, or better yet, Rotor, if you are using one of those languages that have actual proper R. <laughs> so, this is like one of the most used products in Satisfactory. I already have covered Blueprint producing 45 reinforced iron plates per minute, so it's quite natural to aim for production of at least 45 rotors per minute per factory. And standard recipe for rotors is somewhat useless when you want to condense such a factory into a single blueprint. At the same time, copper rotor is just an incredible recipe with output of 11.25 rotors per minute. So with only 4 assemblers, you can easily cover 45 rotors per minute. But there is a catch. This recipe requires quite a lot of screws. And we all know how bad is standard screw recipe and standard screw production chain. It requires a lot of power and a lot of space. The opposite of what we are trying to do with our blueprint. So this is why steeled screws is kinda the recipe that will save the day. If you look at the complete production chain, 45 copper rotors require exactly 3 steel screw constructors. And these 3 constructors fit exactly on one single steel beam constructor. This is exact ratio that 45 bolted iron plates require in my other blueprint. Quite a coincidence, but there is another roadblock. I want this rotor blueprint to be a very low tech solution and preferably use only Mark III belts and lower. And 780 screws is like kind of in a ballpark of Mark V belts. Not the solution I want. But if you remember, we are aiming the production of only 22.5 rotors per blueprint. And this is due to the nature of mirrored production chain. So there is no need to cram 45 rotors in one 4x4, just use two of them. So this will drop amount of screws on one single line twice. And well, better yet, we can just forget about the manifold itself and just fit the constructors directly into the assemblers. So one steel screw constructor will be feeding one one copper rotor assembler. This mirror approach allows to dedicate one floor for the foundries, another floor for the copper sheet constructors and final floor for the rotor assembly itself. And while I can totally jam pack everything into one 4x4 box, I prefer this factory to have decent and interesting exterior, because more free space you have, more of exterior you can make. For example, in this model flame blueprint, I jam packed like 12 assemblers, 6 foundries and 4 constructors only on 3 floors. Fitting only 4 assemblers, 14 constructors and 4 foundries in one 4x4 blueprint is actually quite possible. This is not really necessary for the high touch blueprints, but with the low touch standard recipes it often can come quite handy. So while I was writing this script, 
I had an idea. I want to make a rotor blueprint that is using zero copper. So yeah, guess what? I was able to jam pack this low budget production chain into the 4x4 blueprint being mirrored, just like with other blueprints. So what is the main reasoning behind this blueprint? We kind of want to be like high tech, low power consumption, lesser machines, you know. What is the reason behind this kind of low tech solution? Well, here's the reason. For majority of my blueprints, I prefer to use alloy recipes. This means copper alloy and iron alloy. They are both quite handy, they are using less resources, they are using less energy, and well, there is also solid steel ingot, which is always nice to have recipe considered that well, they just have increased efficiency. And well, sometimes there is quite a lot of extra iron around, because well, iron is the most abundant resource. And you can just capitalize on this by using iron dominant blueprints like that one. For example, Example. Look at this factory producing 270 smart plating per minute. This factory was never planned. But well, since there is so much accessible iron around, I just, well, decided to convert this with the iron dominant blueprints. So yeah, if you are interested to see more blueprints like this, well, consider subscribing. Today we are still have two more blueprints to cover. And the next one is one of my favorites. When I was designing production for 45 stars per minute, I have decided to make very high tech and very low tech setups from the get go. And with the high tech solution, it was very clear that I have a lot of free space. And I have decided to go one step further and include motor production into the same stellar blueprint. And better yet, I made it swappable production lane. Single flip of a power switch, swap production line from 45 stators per minute to 22.5 motors per minute if you input 45 rotors per minute. Here how it works. By the default, factory is powered by electric circuit A, but assemblers producing motors are on the separate power circuit B. While switch is disengaged, there is no power for motor production and the circuit B. If you are using simple splitter, our motor assemblers will block our stutters and they will overflow into the stutter output. Even better feature is that power down machines will not intake resources and block them on the inputs. If we power up our motor production, stutters will be split into two lines to the stutter output and the motor production, and this will deprive half of the motor production from the stutters. To avoid this, smart splitter is being used with the overflow valve. Stutters will overflow into stator output only when motor production is blocked and overflow of stators can happen. Otherwise, motor assemblers will eat up all incoming stators and prevent overflow through the smart splitter valve. Alright, so what is all about this high technology and low technology setups? For the motor production I want something very efficient, low power and compact. This way I can continue motor production chain with production of turbo motors later. But for the dedicated stutter production, I want something mass produced for use in the space elevator parts. This is why for the motor blueprint I am using quickwire stator recipe. This allows to include motor production and reduce resource and power intakes. Yes, it is using Keterium, but honestly there is more than enough of Keterium on the map, especially if you only use this factory as the basis for the turbo motors and the personal storage. Another notion is the internal blueprint layout. Surprisingly, I used three Keterium smelters on the top floor and chained them into quick wire constructors and stator assemblers on the second floor. And on the first floor I have steel pipe production with all the foundries. And finally, the actual motor assemblers are once again on the last floor. Pretty atypical setup, but it works like a charm with the power switch and smart splitter. This is it for the high tech setup, but what about low tech stators? Just like with the rotor iron dominant version, I really want to have iron dominant version for stator production. This way I can easily convert all this abundant iron into the space elevator parts. Major hurdle here is just the amount of the machinery. So if we want to deny copper and say that we are copper deniers, we want to use the standard stator recipe and to use iron wire. Both are very inefficient recipes when it comes to space. This is why in this stator blueprint I am packing 11 constructors on the final floor. Yes, you can totally pack up to like 12 constructors or even 6 assemblers per floor without any hard clipping. The only requirement for this placement is to have enough of vertical space for the multi-level manifolds. So I am using like all 32 meters of height to pack a lot of advanced and very compact manifolds inside. And this is sort of dictating this blueprint exterior. 
Uh, this is like the first time when I'm stacking such a small production chain vertically. So yes, you will need to stack uh, two blueprints on top of each other and mess around a bit with conveyor lifts for the second blueprint. I do not like this and I prefer to save this approach to something more stackable, like for example my smart plate and blueprint. It gets the job done and surprisingly that's more variety to my build. So yeah, this is like this is super nice. And before we wrap everything, let's just check out how usual setup for my blueprints looks like. Uh, every one of them have separated intake rooms for the resources. I prefer to fit my factories from sandwich or foundation layer below. Everything is labeled and pretty much straightforward. If you never exported blueprints, you need to do this manually. You need to go to your system disk, users, your username, app data, local, factory game, saved, save games, slash blueprints. There your session would create a folder once you have blueprints unlocked in your progression and created the first blueprint. Every single blueprint consists from the two parts, a .sbp file with exact parts and items and .sbp cfg file with the text description and color settings. Quick note that my blueprints are done in update 8 experimental and they will crush on the older version of Satisfactory. I hope it will be fixed soon, but for now we are kinda limited to use only in the latest version. Links for the blueprints are down below in the pinned comment. And next time around I would cover my computer factory that will use swappable production lines just like my motor factory. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time, have a nice one and Yakis out.